Now we have the prayer of the sheep. Come on, say bah. Come on, say bah. <laughs> prayer of the sheep. I got to wake you up. Wake up the person next to you. Say, hey, wake up. Wake up, sheep. Don't call them a goat. Say a sheep, all right? No goats. All right, let's talk about this. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 18. Pray in the spirit in every situation. This is our verse that we've been using. Use every kind of prayer and request there is. So there's many, many different types of prayer, many different types of patterns that we can use. Jesus gives us a pattern. Jesus gives us those ways. Like I said, we have the, prayer, the Moses prayer where we talked about the tabernacle and the little, we have a pattern with the Jabez. But hear me, let me give you an, a question. Why should God answer your prayers? Don't have to say it out loud, but think about it. Why should God answer our prayers? Because God does not answer prayer based on you, but he answers prayer based on him. It's based on his word. It's based on his word that says you're free, then you're free. If you're, you're healed, then you're healed. Even if you and I are having a bad day, a bad week, a bad month, maybe you messed up. God doesn't say, oh, you messed up. Your prayer is not going to work. Oh, your prayer, oh, you made a mess back then in 20, you know, whatever, 2014, your prayer ain't going to work. No, God says that if you come to me and ask for forgiveness and be humble and, and, and repent, I will forgive you and I'll wipe away all things. But that doesn't stop God from blessing you. Amen. Because God says, I've already blessed you from the end to the beginning. God is not schizophrenic. He doesn't go, oh, I forgot or anything. No, God blesses you from when? The end to the beginning. Not from the beginning you were born all the way to the end. So that tells me that no matter whatever happens, grace is there to cover me for the things that I mess up in. Amen? Grace is unmerited favor. We didn't deserve it. We, we, and we sang that, but you still gave it anyway. So even if God, even if we're having a bad day, God's name, God's blood, the word of God, the blood of Jesus is, is more powerful than your sin. Amen? The blood of Jesus is more powerful than your disease. The blood of Jesus is more powerful than any other situation. And God wants to do something in your life through prayer. It's all about his name. You know where the, the Word of God says don't use God's name in vain? It's not really necessarily saying that not just use it in cursing, but it's don't use it in a way that is bad. Don't just misuse his name. Don't misunderstand his name because his name, where his name is, is who he is. Because Jesus, if you tell Jesus, Jesus says, hey, how should we pray? First thing he says is what? Our Father who is art in heaven, hallowed be your what? Name, the name of Jesus, the name of God is, is to be said, is to be reverenced, is to be exalted, is to be always remembered and always said. And so I'm going to give you eight qualities here, eight qualities of, the, of God's name that can be found in Psalms 23. Amen? Psalms 20, if you, have, if you need an outline, get this because this is really good. The eight qualities of God's name are found in, the, in Psalms 23, and that's why I call it the prayer pattern of the sheep, because it's in that the shepherd, he, he guides, he protects, he anoints, he does all those things. A shepherd takes care of his sheep, and his sheep know the shepherd's voice, and the sheep know how the shepherd leads. The shepherd anoints the, the sheep. If you should, one thing you should do is go and research what a shepherd, a, a, a shepherd does in real life on how they take care of their sheep. It'll blow you away on how it's so parallel to what God does. The Bible says he anoints our head with oil, our cup runneth over. You know that part? It's because shepherds, what they do is they put oil and they would put, they would drip oil of, of uh, just some oil, of uh, whatever kind of oil, they would put it on there and they would wipe on their, on their face and on their, on their area so that all the gnats won't mess with them. And so what they do is they smear all that oil in their face and they get that hair out of the way and they clean themselves so that they can see. And so the anointing of God helps us to see things that we shouldn't see, helps us to see things as, no, as, though, as though they are not, as though they were. Amen? So the anointing breaks the yoke. The anointing is, is what helps us get through. And so... Here are the qualities. Psalms 23, verse 1 through 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
He makes me lay down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. We all know that scripture. Amen? Now, there's eight qualities of God's name in here. Number one, it says here, you are, it says here, Psalms 23, verse 1, the Lord is my shepherd. You are my shepherd. On number one, the ver that line, right, shepherd. He is, the Lord is my shepherd. If you want to get deep, God's name is Jehovah Ra, Jehovah Ra, my shepherd, R-A-A-H. Jehovah Ra, you're on my pastor or you're on my shepherd. So, so you get close to God so that he could shepherd you, so that he could pastor you. We all need a pastor or a leader that, that I have a pastor, that's Pastor Steve, that I'm under. I also have other pastors that I, that I am under. Why? Because you can't just be alone by yourself. Sheep that are by, by themselves end up getting eaten by wolves. Come on. That's why you need others around you. You need other Christians, other people, other people to help you stay accountable. And so God is saying, I am your shepherd. God wants to have a personal relationship with us. And so he says, I am your pastor. I am your shepherd. And it says here in John 10, 14, check a look, take a look at it. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. And so God is saying, I want to know you in a, in a unique way, in a personal way. I want to know you. I want to pastor you. I want to know you as my own, all right? So we say that the first thing we say, Lord, you are my shepherd. You are my pastor. And you can just say these as you pray. You can just say the Lord's prayer. You say, Lord, you are my shepherd. You are the one who leads me. You're the one who guides me. You're the one who is there for me. You're the one in my protector. You keep me safe from all these things, Lord. Thank you, Lord, being my pastor being my shepherd number two you are my provider it says there in, in psalms 23 verse 1 the lord is my shepherd i shall not want so the word so the, the number two is that you are my provider and the and that word is called jehovah jireh j-i-r-e-h so he is jehovah jireh my supply he supplies everything I need. So as you pray, you say, thank you, Lord, for your name. You are, your name is great. Lord, I thank you, Father, that you supply all my needs because you are Jehovah Jireh. You are my pro provider. Lord, I provide, Lord my, my job is not my, my, my source. You are my source, Lord. Father, you are the source of everything. Lord, I don't put my trust in money. I put my trust in you. Amen? Lord, I can't put my trust in anything else. I have to put it in you. And so as we pray, we, and, and we cannot make our job and our accomplishments the center of our life and the center of everything. Just because you have degrees after your name doesn't say, doesn't say that anything that, you, that that's going to provide for you. The only thing you can be sure of is God will provide. God will make a way where there's no way. Amen? Because just like Brother Gabe and his te the testimony, God will make a way. God will get it to you. But sometimes we're the one running away from him, and God's trying to run after us. And it's blessings and, and all these mercies shall follow you, shall chase you down all the days of your life. Amen? So blessings and, 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 and all these things are trying to chase us down. And God says, hey, I, I am your supply. You cannot be financially, totally financially secure. And you all be like, what? Because think about it. How much money would it take for you to be secure from anything that can happen in this world. There's no, there's no amount of money that you can say, okay, if I had $120 billion, then I can be safe. No, because you can lose that $120 billion in any kind of, in any way, in any way fashion. Just because you might say, well, if I had more money, if I had more of this, if I had more of that, I could be financially set. No. 
Because there's no amount of money that can protect you from every situation that it can be made possible. The only person, the only one that I know of that can make all things come together for my good is Jesus and God. Amen? That's the only security that you and I have is knowing that, you know what? No matter what happens, God is going to make a way. I don't have to have a million dollars in the bank for me to be secure. So long as God is with me, all things are possible. Amen? So long as God is with me, he is my provider. There's no jobs around. Don't worry. God will make a way. God will make a job for you. God will make an opportunity. God will do things. God can do things that money cannot do. Come on, somebody. Come on. Somebody say amen on that. God can do things that money cannot do. God can do things that influence cannot do. God can do things in your life that you can't do, that you couldn't do a whole lifetime. He can do in one, one, one visit, one run-in with one person, with one opportunity, and it changes your life forever because it's God. And so God supplies. We all want to grab, 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 hoard, hoard. We're all trying to grab a piece of the pie when you should be grabbing a piece of God, and when God, you get a piece of God, when you get a bit of the word in your mouth, it'll then direct you, amen? Just like a bit, the Bible says that a, a, a bit in the horse's mouth guides the horse where it is. If you just get a bit of the word in you, it'll start guiding your life. It'll start directing you and telling you where you need to go, amen? So tell the person next to you, get a bit of the word in you. Get the bit in you. Get a bit. That's crazy, right? Everyone's going to be buying bits. Right. There's a, there was, a, there was a, a, one thing. There was this man that, uh, talking about hoarding, hoarding, there was this man that was, uh, that got called because, or no, there was this man that got caught stealing, you can kind of say. I was going to say something else. He just got caught stealing. And he had to go in court. And so he's there, and the judge says, hey, well, what happened? Well, I got caught shoplifting. Why? Well, I was just grabbing, and I just, just saw it, and I just wanted them peaches. I just wanted peaches. And so the wife is there, standing there, you know, trying to be there as a support. And so the judge was in a very bad mood. I mean, he was in a really bad mood that day. And so the guy was just like, I just saw them peaches, and I just wanted them. I just, so I took it, and I just, just took it. So the, so the judge was like, well, you know what? For every peach that's in there, I'm going to give you a month in prison. So I was like, oh, man, how many peaches are in there? And it's just like, there's four peaches in here. There's big old large peaches. That's four months. And then the wife talks up and says, uh, he also stole a can of peas. So if you get it, it'll get there for you. Don't take it. Don't grab and blab. Don't try to take, oh, I got to grab and I got to do anything it takes to get my way, to get more money. I'll lie. I'll steal. I'll step on the person next to me. But uh, I heard this one thing somebody told me this week while I was at work, and I had lunch with them, and they said, the truth will set you free. The truth will set you free. So long as you speak the truth, so long as you say the truth at work, so long as you stand for what is right, God will stand right behind you. If there's something going wrong at work or there's something going wrong at a place, if you stand for the truth, it'll set you free. Amen? Just as we're going to celebrate Martin Luther King uh, Day on Monday, that man stood for truth. He stood for what was right, and the truth set the nation free. Amen? So you got to set, you got to stand for what is right, and the truth will stand there with you and confirm you. Amen? And so we've got to be that way. Philippians 4.19 says, And my God will meet all your needs according to his glory and riches in Christ Jesus. Amen? It's God who's going to meet the need. Amen? You don't know what you need tomorrow, but God does. So I'll put my trust in him. Number three, you are my peace. Jehovah Shalom. You are my peace. You're Jehovah Shalom. S-H-A-L-O-M. He is peace. He doesn't give peace. He is peace. He just doesn't give it. Somebody says, well, I, I give this. Well, you can give something, but if it's a part of you, God is peace. He is love. He is salvation. He is healing. 
He's not trying to give something that does, he doesn't have. He, he has it. So the Psalms 23 verse 2 says, he makes me lay down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. God, give me peace where I cannot get peace. Come on, we've all had times in our life where, we were, it, is, where it was stress, it was anxiety. There was so much stress that it was overwhelming you. Come on, we've all been there. I've been there. Where it's just like, oh, my God, there's just so much. I don't think I can take it. Money, you know, it's family, marriage, work, school, health can put stress on your life. It can put so much stress on your life that we forget and it overwhelms us. We put stress on ourselves and we put stress in areas where, where, where stress shouldn't be. And God tells us that he is the God of peace. He is shalom. And we're in a, in, a, in a time like this, we're doing too much. We can get to a place where we think there's a thing called multitasking. You can't, there's no such thing as multitasking. Because your brain cannot think on that many things. And what ends up happening is you focus on one thing and you shelve the other. And you shelve it, shelve it, shelve it, shelve it. And it's not multitasking, it's multi-stressing. That's what I call it. Multi-stressing. Just, just stressed out. Because we're focused on so many things, we can't just focus on one thing. Sometimes we get too busy. Everything is doable, but not everything is sustainable. And I'm going to say that one more time so maybe it's clear for some of you. Everything is doable, but not everything is sustainable. You might be able to, to work, and you might be able to do this, or you might be able to do that, or you might be able to do this, or you might be able to do that because you're young or because it's there, but not everything is sustainable. It takes a, it's going to take a toll. The Bible says this, better one hand with peace than two handfuls with stress chasing after life. It's better to live with one hand and the other is free than to live with two hands full and you can't live free because you got everything is so full. You're so, you're so overwhelmed. God says just to be okay with one. You don't have to have two. And so we need to understand, yeah, one dollar is good, but two is better. <laughs> Everybody wants two dollars. Uh, you know, maybe activity, maybe act some activity is good. But not too much activity is not good for you. So we, we can have things that is too much or just have just enough. You know, one dollar is good. It's all right. One kid is good. More kids is better, right? More kids are better. Some of you are going, at no, Pastor, don't be saying that. <laughs> well, one is good. Two is better. Two is good. Three is better. Well, how about maybe kids, uh, wife, one wife is good, two is wrong, all right? Just three is wrong. It says, like, three is better. No, no, no. No, 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 no. But there was a, there was a guy in seminary who thought that that was right. Was that when he was in seminary, and, I'm, and, and he said, he said, why, why was, why was, uh, why was uh, you know, all of them and Solomon, he had a thousand wives. Come on, God, come on. What was that all about? What was that all about? And, the, you know, the professor was just like, well, I'll be honest with you, you know, he had a thousand wives. You know, the, the chances of one coming home in a good mood was going to be better. And I say, oh, bad, bad pastor, bad pastor, bad pastor, bad pastor. And the, the, guy, the people, the student says, uh, I disagree with that. That's false doctoring right there. And the thing about it is that on this, he says, more is not better more is not sustainable. More is not good for you. You need to do what the Word of God says to you to do, and that's do what He says. And if you do what He says, everything will be all right. More is not better. It's what God says in His Word. That's better. That's what's better. You think, well, more is better. No. Maybe what you need is what God is trying to give you. And a lot of times we're running away from what God is saying. Here's what you need. He says, that's not what I need. I need this. And God says, no, you need this. No, I don't want that. I've had that for too long. No, you need this. We need to know that God knows what we need of. He says this in John 14. He says, peace I live with you. 
my peace I give you, I do not give you as the world gives. You see this? I don't give you things like the world gives you. I give you things the way I believe you need. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. I am your peace. The peace I give you, it's not way the way the world will give you. The world says you can be in peace if you just have all these things, you'll be in peace. No. Everything is doable, but not everything is sustainable. Just remember that. Number four, you're my healer, Jehovah Rapha. Come on, say Jehovah Rapha. Y'all can do better than that. Jehovah Rapha. He's my healer. Psalms 23, verse 3, he restores my soul. He returns to a place of new. God wants to bring back everything that the devil has stolen to the brand new. Amen? God heals my body. God is, my body's weak and it's easily destroyed. God says, I want to strengthen you. I want to help you. I want to strengthen. I want to renew you. I want to make you brand new. The doctor cannot take care of you if you don't go to the doctor and tell the doctor what's wrong. And so we must come to a place where it says, God, I missed, my, I missed this step. I missed, I messed up. God, fix me. God, help me. God, come and, and fix what's messed up. And the doctor, Dr. J. Rafa, Dr. Rafa will come and he will heal you. But we have got to come and come to him and say, God, here, is, here am I broken. But, Lord, return me to a place of brand new. Amen. The Bible says that he'll restore my soul to a place of new, not a place of it's, it's, it's refurbished. God says, I will put you in a place that's brand new. First Peter chapter 2, verse 24, he personally carried our sins on his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, you are healed. Once you were like sheep who wandering around, but now you have turned to your shepherd the guardian of your soul. God is your shepherd. He is your healer. Amen? Can you get an amen on that? Number five, you're my righteousness. He leads me down the path of righteousness for his namesake. This, this name, righteousness, is Jehovah Sitkenu. S-T-S-I-D-K-E-N-U. Sitkenu. Meaning that righteous has a path to follow. In other words, all your sins have been paid for past, present, and future. In other words, you're my righteous. You're the one who makes me righteous even in my past sins, my present sins, and my future sins. He is the God that leads us. God helps you get your life in order. You're not here by accident. God wants you to be here. He's leading you. He's guiding you through seasons, through times, and so he guides us in the place of righteousness. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 14, As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance, but just as he has called you is holy, so you be holy in all that you do. So God says, you're righteous. So he's our righteous. He is Jehovah Sidkenu. He's the one who leads me down the path of the right way I need to go. So remember, this is a prayer. You're praying. You're praying. Number six, you are my consistent companion. You are my consistent companion. That word is called Jehovah Shema, which is S-H-A-M-M-A-H, Shema. You are my consistent companion. In other words, you can say the word He's always there. He's always there. Wherever The Bible says, if I go to the deep, you're there. If I go to the heavens, you're there. If I go to the, the, to the ocean, you're there. If I go into the clouds, you're there. If I go anywhere, you're there. So God is saying, yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and their staff, they comfort me. Even though you're going through this valley, you're going through this thing, your rod and a staff, they comfort me. There's no place where you can go that God is not there. Amen? No place. You're my consistent companion. He's always there. So you can be praying that, Lord, you're always there. You'll never leave me. You'll never forsake me. Hebrews chapter 13 says that. It says, God says, never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, 
the Lord is my helper. I will not be afraid what mere mortals or what man can do to me. So we have to understand that God is my companion. It's like somebody walking with you on a trail. God is there. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit, he's the comforter. He's the standby. He's the paraclete. He's the, he's the one that is going to be with me. Jesus says, I'm leaving, but I'm sending someone who is like me, who's going to be for me. He's going to speak like me, and he's going to be your companion as you walk through life. I'm not here. Jesus is not here. Jesus is on the throne. <laughs> he's sitting at the right hand of God, and the Holy Spirit is on this world. And the Holy Spirit is walking among us, and it feels like Jesus. It, 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 it sense like Jesus, but it's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit says, I will only say what I hear the Father say. I will only do what I hear the Father tell me to do. And so we must understand that he is our consistent companion. Number seven, you're my defender. This is good. This, this is real good. You're my defender, Jehovah Nissi, N-I-S-S-I, Jehovah Nissi. In other words, get this, he is the banner of victory. He is the banner of victory. Psalms 23, verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. God fights my battles for me while I sit at a table. The best way to describe that is people who are against me, God will take them down for me. Right now, men and women are in armed forces are right now holding a banner called the United States, and they're right now fighting for us, holding a banner while you and I are here sitting at the table. There are men and women that are fighting and dying all, all every year, and they're, they're fighting for you and I so you and I can go to work, so you and I can, can watch football later on today, so you and I can come to church and worship. While you and I are living our life, they're fighting a battle that we should be fighting. Amen. So we should always give those people that are in military, you should always thank them. You should always say thank you for your service because they're fighting the fight for you. They're fighting for you while you're sitting at the table. And God says, just like those men and women are fighting for you, I fight for you too. You don't see me and you don't see those men and women. You don't, see, you don't hear about them. The only time you hear about them is when something bad happens. But they're fighting right now. As you sleep, they take care of you. As we're asleep, men and women of, of armed forces, they take care of us. While we're asleep, they're watching. As if you had, if you had a, a, a police car that's sitting at, your, at, your car, at the front of, your, at front of your house, and you had a bunch of people surrounded your, your house, that's how God is taking care of you. He's watching you. He's fighting for you. He's doing things just like with Daniel when he was praying. And pr Daniel prayed, 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 and nothing happened. And then that angel came and says, man, what took you so long? He says, I've been fighting for you. I've been fighting, but the prince of Persia, uh, that, that the evil one was fighting me, and I had to send more angels, and that angel got through, and I was able to come through to answer your prayer. God's constantly fighting. You don't even know as you drove here that God helped you avoid an accident. You don't know the angels had he took care of you. You could have died from that food poisoning, but it just kind of gave you an upset stomach, and God was there to take care of you. Your son, your daughter might have had have injured themselves, and it could have been worse, but God says, I, I'm going to come in, and I'm going to fight that battle of sickness for you. You got to understand God's fighting for us all the time. And so we must take the time and say, thank you, God. You're my defender. You're Jehovah Nisi. You're my banner of victory. Number eight, the last one, you are my sanctifier. And this one is called Jehovah, and it's a little hard to say, Midkadesh. I always say it, M-Kadesh. M-K-A-D-D-E-S-H. He is my sanctifier. Jehovah Midkadesh. Psalms 23, verse 5, you anoint my head with oil, my cup runneth over. In other words, now, Lord, give me supernatural ability. Give me the anointing that I had, supernatural ability to do the thing that I need to do. That by, the word says my cup runneth over means that 
you have an anointing that other people can't do, and it runs over so that you can be able to do and give it back to somebody else. There's things, there's things that happen, like, have you ever seen somebody play an instrument? Have you ever seen somebody do something, and you're like, man, that person is gifted. That person has the anointing. When you hear them sing, or when you hear them play, or when you hear them preach, or you hear them doing something, you're like, man, that person has the anointing. It just comes easy to them. That's the overflow. And for, for you, every one of you has an overflow. There's something that you do that overflows and you're anointed to do it that nobody else, that other people look at and go, how do you do that? And that's because, man, it's easy. I just do this and I just do that. I can just do this. You know what that is? That's God's anointing on you. When you're at work and people are like, man, that is an awesome idea. How did you come up with that? You got to give God the credit on that. He said, you know what, I, 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 you know, I came up with that idea, but it just, man, to yourself, he says, man, thank you, Lord. You gave me the anointing to do my job the way that nobody else can do it. And you've got to understand that God is your sanctifier. He's the anointed one. He's the one who gives you the extra ability to do something that nobody else can do. He gives you the ability to do the thing that you were called to do. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9, and we're going to close with this. But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. God answers prayer based on who he is. Come on. He answers prayer based on who he is, not on who we are. He answers prayer based on who he is, not on who we are. So there, there, there's the eight qualities right there. If you can just write these down and say, Lord, you're my shepherd. Thank you, Father. Lord, you're my provider. Lord, thank you, Lord. You're my peace. Lord, you're my healer. You're my righteousness. You're my constant companion. You're my defender. And you're my sanctifier. You can just pray those, those words, those eight words out. And then say the word behind it, Lord, you're Jehovah Nisi, you're Jehovah Mkadesh, Lord, you're Jehovah Shama, you're Jehovah Sitkanu, you're Jehovah Rapha, you're Jehovah Shalom, you're Jehovah Ra, you're Jehovah Jireh, Lord, all that, you are Jehovah that lives in me. And when you proclaim the name, there's power in that name. When you start saying Jehovah, man, it starts releasing power so that when you pray, you'll say, God, I thank you, Lord, that you are, these are the names that you are. Any, did, you, did you realize in all of these, this prayer, there wasn't a, a complaining, there wasn't, there wasn't a list of things? If you just pray this prayer, you'll, just, you'll leave saying, man, I feel like I accomplished something in prayer. What you did is that you acknowledged that God, God's name and you made God's name great. You lifted him high. You said, God, you are the God of you are the God of healing. You are the God of provision. You are the God, all these different things. You are that God. And I praise your name. Amen. So let's take this prayer. Let's take this prayer. These last week that we have, and the prayers that I gave you, Moses, Jabez, and then now this one. Take those prayers. And let's this week dig into it and say, you know what? I'm gonna pray these prayers. Even if you just say the words and just repeat the words, go through these three prayer patterns. And it'll change the way you and I speak to God. And I tell you, God will speak to you because we're doing it the right way. We're doing it based on the word of God. Amen? Come on, let's all stand together. Those of you that are watching, come on, everybody stand. Those of you that are watching by live stream, we, 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 we just thank you for being a part of us. We thank you that you are uh, you spend the time to be with us. And so I just want to just pray right now for you right now. Come on, everybody close your eyes. Everybody here. We just want to pray with you. And I, I, I really feel when I started speaking about peace that a lot of, lot of people were dealing with, with anxiety, with, with stress, with things that are, that are just really dealing with them. And we need that spirit of peace. We need that spirit of hope. We need that Jehovah Shalom. We need to have Shalom in our life. Right now, many of us are doing too much in our life, and it's overwhelming us, and it's going over, and God's saying, I didn't call you to be overwhelmed. I call you to be in peace. 
And so those of you that are watching and those of you that are here, you have so much anxiety right now. It's just January, and you're like, oh, my gosh, I don't know what I'm going to do this year. We, you need to give the shepherd your burdens. Give it to him. And say, God, I need Jehovah Shalom in my life. I need Jehovah Jireh in my life. I need Jehovah Sitkanu in my life. I need Jehovah my banner. I need him to fight for me this year because I'm tired of fighting it on my own. I need someone to fight for me. And God, the Bible says God will fight your battles if you will just lie down in green pastures. If you'll just do what the shepherd says, God says all those things will be added unto you. So let's pray. Father God, I thank you for... For those that are watching, Lord, if there be any, any anger, any anxiety, any problems, any things that have been going on in our life, Lord, you are the good shepherd and you take care of your sheep, Lord. Father, I pray, Lord, that if we've been off, we've been doing things wrong, we've been up and down, Lord, we've been just saying the wrong things, believing the wrong things, I thank you, Lord. Lord, as we give you our life, Lord, may we have your name in our lips May we say the name before we complain, before we say something negative. May the word Jehovah come out of our mouth. May Jehovah come out of our mouth and just acknowledge you. And may we speak your word. Father, I believe it that when I was speaking, Father, on the area of peace, many of them were grabbing to that that area of peace, Lord. We need peace in our life. All is, we can do all these things is is permissible, but not everything is sustainable. Lord, let us to be able to police our life. Let us be able to look through our life and filter it today as we pray the remaining week. May there be some areas in our life, Lord, right now, those that are watching and here, that there's some areas of our life we got to say, I can't do that no more. I can't, I can't, I can't be thinking that no more. I can't be living like that no more. It's not sustainable. God wants me to live with one hand full instead of two hands full, always stressing and worrying about if I'm going to lose it. Lord, I pray, Lord, that we put our life and our future in your hands. And The one thing we do is we give our life to you. If, Father, if no one knows you right now, if those that are watching don't know you, I pray, Lord, that they search for you. I pray, Lord, that they open up their heart and give their life to you. Lord, right now, if there if there's anybody right now that needs you, Lord, I pray that we say this prayer. Father God, come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. Save me, Lord. I need you to be my shepherd. I need you in my life. Be the Lord of my life. I give my life to you. In Jesus' name we pray, Father. Amen, 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 amen.